Hi everybody, Annalisa here with ABC for Dance. And Deb and I would just like to say thank you for following along with us over these 30 lessons. We hope you enjoyed learning more about your body through the series as much as we enjoyed making these videos and sharing them with you. Fred says hi too, but he's not very much help for this last lesson. So he's gonna stand there and watch. We're gonna do our whole body. This is kind of your way of putting together all 29 lessons that you've finished already. The easiest way to do this would be to have someone either video you or set your camera or your tablet or your phone so that you can video yourself, both standing straight front and standing sideways because you're gonna find sideways is a little bit easier to see certain things. And we're gonna go through all of the pieces of our body that we talked about and kind of see where is your body's natural place to stand? Where's your resting place? The more you stand still, the more your body starts going into kind of strange things. So walk around a little bit before you have somebody start to video you. And I'm gonna say start from the side. So when you're starting from the side, the first thing we wanna look at is our ankle. Does our ankle tend to be more towards plantar flexion where we had more of a pointed or opened angle at our ankle, more towards dorsiflexion, where that angle's closed a little bit, or is it more neutral, where you've got almost a 90 degree from your shin to the floor? Going up to the next joint we look at is your knee. So when I'm looking at my knee, I wanna see, does it tend to stay in a kind of bent or flexed position? Does it go to a more neutral position where I'm straight but I'm not locked? Or does it tend to lock it back into a hyperextended position? Okay, so again, you have flexed, neutral, hyperextended. Let's continue up the body and we're gonna to go to our pelvis. So remember pelvis, we're talking about the whole hip area. And is it more anteriorly tilted? So if it was a basin of water, the water would be dumping down towards my feet. Is it neutral where the front and the back are fairly level? Or am I posteriorly tilted or tucked under where if I had a basin of water, it would be coming towards my belly more than the floor? Then we're gonna come up to our lumbar spine. So remember our lumbar spine is this lower spine area. How much curve do we have there? Do we have a whole lot of curve there? Or do we tend to be more neutral? Or do we have no curve and it's flatter? Then we go up to our thoracic spine and our thoracic spine can be rounded. It can be more neutral or it can lose a little bit of that curve and be a little straighter. Going up to your cervical, you should have some curve in your cervical spine some people have a very flat cervical spine. Some people have a lot of extension in their cervical spine. So you want to find where that tends to be for you. Then we have our shoulders. Do they tend to be neutral? Where are my shoulders kind of in line with my ear? Or do they tend to be maybe rounded forward? So they're coming in front of me a little bit. Or retracted back where they're getting pulled backwards. Do they lift up towards my ears? Or are they kind of just hanging there? Or do they go downwards? And with my head, does my head tend to come forward, stay neutral, or contract back? Sorry, retract back, didn't mean to say protract. When we're standing and facing straight front, I'm gonna bring this pant leg down just so it's a little easier line to see. Does my weight seem to be fairly even between my legs? Do I stand with my legs far apart? Do I keep my legs under me? Do I pull my legs all the way together? Do I tend to stand in a fourth position? Where do we tend to go? Do I tend to stack everything up or do I have some shifting going on where body parts are offline? Is my head straight or does it kind of tilt to one side like I have a phone there? Or does it shift to one side or twist? So these are all the things you want to just look at in your body and see where is your natural tendency to be? And then where is that compared to the neutral that we explored in all of these lessons? And what can you do to become closer to that neutral? Now I'll tell you before you start, 
I teach this body positioning or body alignment exercise a lot to teachers and to Pilates instructors and to other exercise people. And taking a room of 12 people when I'm teaching a course, it is very rare that anyone is totally lined up. So please don't feel bad if you start realizing, oh, I've got this a little bit off and that a little bit off. We all do. What's important is to find out what those things that are off are and see what you can do to bring them towards neutral. And the reason you want to bring them towards your neutral is because it's easier to move when everything's lined up the way it's supposed to be. Your body works more efficiently there. So the more you can center yourself, align yourself, and have a good base posture or a good neutral starting position, the less energy you have to expend to get to that neutral and the more energy you have left to dance. So we hope we found this really interesting that you learned things about yourself and about body movement and maybe even sparked a little bit more interest in anatomy. Stay safe, be kind, be well, keep dancing. And if you have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you. So from Deb and I and Fred and Nisha, we say thank you. Thank you for joining us for these last 30 lessons.